Welcome chemists to another episode of Bale's Chemistry. Today is our second episode in our electrochemical cells topic and we're going to dive into what an electropotential is and how we calculate the electrode potentials in the lab. This is AQA specification 1.11, electropotentials and electrochemical cells and it appears on paper one of your final A-level exams. So what is an electropotential? Well, in the last episode, we looked at an electrochemical cell where metals are pushing electrons around the circuit. Now, the voltage we measure there is the outcome of the struggle of both metals, both half cells, trying to push electrons into the circuit and one of them ultimately winning out. They're pushing against each other. So the value that we record is sort of a competition between two half cells. But what we really want to be able to do is compare these against a neutral or a set standard. So for an electropotential, we have our half cell pushing against a standard electrode. For this, we use a standard hydrogen electrode. So a standard hydrogen electrode is a platinum electrode with hydrogen gas being bubbled over the top into a solution of H plus ions. The solution needs to be one mole per decimeter cubed of H plus ions. It needs to be held at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin and the pressure of 100 kilopascals. When it comes to drawing out a standard hydrogen electrode, it's slightly different to how we've done them before. So this time we add in an extra phase change because we've got a phase change between the solid platinum and the hydrogen gas. We always draw the standard hydrogen electrode on the left and it always has a voltage of zero. So when it comes to measuring the electrode potential of a half cell, we combine it with a standard hydrogen electrode like shown here. The standard hydrogen electrode has an electrode potential of zero volts and the zinc half cell has an electrode potential of minus 0.76 volts. This means that the zinc is more reactive than the hydrogen and is pushing electrons from the zinc atoms up into the hydrogen electrode. So we can take all these electropotential values that we've worked out by combining them with the standard hydrogen electrode and put them into the electrochemical series. An electrochemical series lists out all the reduction reactions linked to their electropotentials, putting the most negative at the top and the most positive at the bottom. So these reactions are all reversible. So if we want the value for an oxidation reaction, all we need to do is reverse the sign on the voltage. So for zinc, it goes from being minus 0.76 for the reduction reaction to plus 0.76 for the oxidation reaction. So if we look at a small snapshot of electrochemical series, we've got the most negative values at the top and the most positive values at the bottom. The ones at the top are easily oxidized and because of this, they make really good reducing agents. They also happen to be the most reactive metals. Now we know this because metals want to be ionized. So the more reactive the metal, the more likely they are to give up their electrons. At the bottom of the table, we'll have species which are more easily reduced. They make better oxidizing agents and these ones will be the most reactive non-metals. Now we haven't got any non-metals on this table at the moment, but we'll be looking at those in our next episode. So when it comes to putting together a whole cell then, we can look at these two reactions where we've got magnesium and zinc. These are both shown here as their reduction reactions, just like they appear in the electrochemical series. So we'll take the more negative value and this will be the more reactive metal. And we're gonna put this on the left-hand side of our electrochemical cell. Now this needs to be oxidation because they're gonna lose their electrons, so we'll reverse this reaction. The more positive values will be the less reactive metals. We're gonna put these on the right-hand side of our electrochemical cell. These will stay as reduction reactions because they're gonna gain the electrons from the process. When we combine these together then and draw them out as the full electrochemical cell, it will look like this. The magnesium solid turning into the magnesium ions on the left-hand side of the cell, and then zinc ions turning into zinc atoms on the right-hand side of the cell. The cell EMF is the actual voltage that we'd read off the voltmeter when we combine the two half cells. This can be predicted by combining the electropotentials from the electrochemical series. We use this equation, E cell equals the E of the right-hand side minus the E of the left-hand side. We use a little plim cell sign here to show that these values are recorded under the standard conditions which we talked about when we talked about the standard hydrogen electrode. So we can draw the cell out like this. We've got the electrode potential for the magnesium cell out there on the left, and we've got the electrode potential for the zinc half cell out on the right. We can combine those together to get an overall cell EMF of plus 1.62 volts. That's it for this episode of Bale's Chemistry. In our next episode, we're gonna look at some more of the unusual examples of electrochemical cells and look at some of the finer details. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up at the bottom and don't forget to subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any of our new videos coming up this week.